Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today in this session we will dive into the world of ECS which is your Elastic Container Service. So in this session we will look at your top 10 uh, interview questions that you can expect as part of this uh, ECS service. Whether you are preparing for an interview or you are just eager to uh, enhance your knowledge on the ECS service then you are in the right place. Once again before I start off with the session please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question we have is what is AWS ECS and how does it differ from other container orchestration services. So ECS like I said it stands for Elastic Container Service and uh, uh, this is a fully managed service provided by AWS so you don't have to do anything you can just go ahead and uh, set up the cluster and then uh, AWS will do all the hard work for you. Now by making use of this service we can run stop and manage your docker container so at any point when we want to create your docker containers like run docker containers we can make use of your uh, ECS service for that so uh, with this we create a cluster and then we can start deploying our containers on on that cluster so um, how does it differ from other services now your EC service it provides you integration with all the other AWS services we have it could be your EC2 instance it could be your VPC it could be your S3 IAM and lots of other services and this allows you a seamless management of your containers which we are running in the AWS environment. Moving on to the next question what is a task definition in AWS ECS. Now task definition is basically what we use to uh, give the instructions to the ECS service. So we write this task definition either in the JSON format or in the YAML format and these are simply your instructions. So you know um, how do we tell your ECS as to how many containers you want or which image to use or on what port numbers to run so all that information so all those instructions we can define in your task definition so generally this task definition in, it includes information like your docker image your cpu your memory your storage requirements among other information so this is simply a blueprint all right so for any task that you want to run uh, within your service or standalone task we make use of your task definition so here is an example of your task definition so uh, you can see I'm specifying the image, uh, memory, CPU, my port mapping, my lock configuration. So this acts as a blueprint. So every time I create run this, uh, ECS will use these as instructions and it will start creating the containers using these configurations for me. The next question we have is explain the difference between a task and a service in AWS ECS. So um, task is nothing but your containers whenever we execute your task definition it creates an instance of the task definition which we call it as a task and this task it represents your container so every container that we run we call it as a task now this can be a single container or it can be a group of containers we call it as your task now the service on the other hand is basically the number of tasks that we want to maintain so you know like let's say you want to maintain three containers or three tasks we define that as a service so this is your higher level abstraction which helps us to manage and maintain the specified number of instances of your task definition so you know like let's say you want uh, three tasks to be created out of the task definition we will be creating a service for that so this ensures we have continuous availability and also the scalability of your uh, containers to make your app make sure your application is highly available so once again task is simply your containers um, the application that we are running and the service is basically your collection of tasks if you want to run multiple tasks and if you maintain a specified number of tasks we can make use of your service for that moving on to the next question how does ecs handle container placement within a cluster so uh, when we execute a task definition or when we create a service how does your ecs uh, manage those containers how does it places those uh, containers across your cluster so it essentially follows a combination of your uh, task placement strategy and your constraints okay so it, it uses two things now what is your task placement strategy it is simply uh, spreading your instances across or spreading your tasks across your instances so let's say we have two ec2 instances and if i say i want to create two tasks 
then my ECS will use this task placement strategy and it will spread the task across these two instances. Whereas the constraints on the other hand is used to control on which instance you want the tasks to be uh, placed. Like for example, let's say you have one instance which is using Ubuntu AMI and then you have another instance which is using uh, Amazon Linux AMI. And you want one task to run on the Ubuntu AMI only and the other task to run on Amazon Linux AMI only. That's where we can make use of your constraints. Now it's not only AMI, it can be your instance type or any custom metadata. So any information that you want to use to control the uh, placement of your containers on the instances, we can make use of your constraints for that. Moving on to the next question, can ECS be integrated with other AWS services? So yes, means that's one of the feature we have for your ECS service, which is integration with other AWS services. So we can integrate this with your load balancing, with your IAM service, with your VPC service, with your CloudWatch service, and many other services. So integration is a very important feature that your ECS provides. Now this integration, allows you for better management of your containers, better networking, security and monitoring of your containers that we are running on the ECS service. The next question we have is what is the purpose of ECS, ECS Fargate and how does it differ from ECS on EC2 instances? Now when we are running our containers there are two options that we can go with. One is deploying the containers on ECS Fargate and the other option is using EC2 instance. Now what's the difference between them? Now your ECS Fargate is simply your serverless approach where we don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure. So this allows us to run the containers but then not worry about the infrastructure that will be utilized to run these containers. So your ECS Fargate is completely uh, serverless. The uh, ECS on EC2 on the other hand uh, we will have to manage the infrastructure, all right? So um, uh, we kind of have to uh, uh, launch the instances or uh, uh, integrate those instances with your ECS and then start deploying the uh, containers on these EC2 instances. So that's the main difference we have. So your ECS Fargate is a serverless approach and then ECS on EC2 is your server approach. So we will be responsible for managing the infra. Uh, with your ECS Fargate, we don't have to worry about the infrastructure management. Moving on to the next question, uh, explain the role of ECS uh, cluster. So when we are working with your ECS, the first thing we do is we create our cluster. All right. So cluster plays a very important role. So it's a logical grouping of your uh, containers, which helps you to manage these container instances. Uh, it also allows you to deploy and run your uh, containers on your EC2 instances or Fargate. So when we are creating our cluster, we need to specify whether we want to go with the Fargate, which is a serverless approach, or whether we want to use your EC2 instances. So these clusters, they mainly provide us with scalability and also help us organize our resources for the applications that we are going to containerize. So if you have like multiple applications, Generally, it is recommended that we have different different clusters which will act as a logical grouping for these uh, containers. So we are kind of differentiating or kind of isolating our applications such that they are running in their own logical grouping. The next question we have is how does ECS manage container networking and what is the task IAM role? So um, networking is something very important. Uh, any containerization we take, that's, that's very important, right? So your ECS, it makes use of your um, task networking mode. So when we are defining our task definition, so here we will specify the network mode. So generally it is recommended that we go with the AWS uh, VPC option. But this is how we define your networking. Uh, component in your task definition so that's how your ECS manages so whatever we have defined your ECS will understand that it has to use that networking and start running your tasks on your infrastructure the task IAM roles on the other hand can be used to grant permissions to your task as to you know if your task wants to um, access any other services could be your load balancing or VPC or CloudWatch so if you want to interact with other services we will need to give the necessary permissions and that's where we make use of your task IAM role. So this 
role but whatever the role that is associated with your task will give those tasks secure access to other aws resources the next question we have is what is ecs auto scaling and how does it work so auto scaling that's a very generic concept we have in your aws so whenever you want to manage the scaling up and scaling down of your resources we can make use of your auto scaling the same thing we have in your ecs as well so this helps you to automatically adjust the number of tasks that you are running within a service and all this happens by monitoring your cloudwatch alarms all right so um you know based on load that's that you are getting based on the demand you want to automatically scale up and scale down your containers that's where we can make use of your ecs auto scaling so this allows you to scale your um, resources dynamically whenever there is a change in demand or change in uh, traffic so uh, if the traffic is more launch more containers if the traffic is less then remove certain containers moving on to the next question how can you achieve high availability in ecs services so there are different different components that we can utilize for this to make your ecs services highly available one we can make sure that we are running the services across multiple availability zones so that's one way how we can make your application highly available in addition to that we can also leverage your auto scaling groups which will help us to increase the redundancy of your uh, resources and then we can also leverage features like your load balancing which can help us to distribute the traffic across multiple tasks so if you have like uh, three tasks the load balancing will help you to distribute your traffic across these these three tasks that's how you can make sure that your application has high availability when we are running them in ecs services so there you have it some of the uh, common question that you can expect as part of your um, ecs service uh, again whether you're preparing for an interview or you're, you're just eager to enhance your knowledge this uh, should be sufficient if you found the video helpful give it a thumbs up and uh, uh, please subscribe to the channel to get more aws insights and uh, click on that bell icon to stay updated if you have any specific questions or any specific topics that you want me to cover please drop them in the comment section until next time happy learning